I was born in Hilldale, Utah, which is the Utah side of Colorado City. I was born a seventh generation from an Mormon. Every generation from Joseph Smith's day to mine has lived polygamy. I was born in a fundamentalist group. I was born and raised in the Kingston group. Smith. Joseph, Smith. Joseph Smith started it, like a plural marriage, the principle of true Mormonism, pure Mormonism, original Mormonism, the highest principle of the gospel is plural celestial marriage. It was essential to their salvation. That's what we were taught. Smoking gun. Evidence, particularly of a crime, that is difficult or impossible to dispute. S M O K I N G G U N. In this book, the author states that in the Desert News, July 1st, 1874, Brigham Young admits he and not Joseph Smith invented polygamy. Yang reports a vision of polygamy in England, but reports he never told Joseph Smith. And this was in the Desert News, 1874. It is admissible in court as an admission against interest. It is a reliable source in that it was a daily publication, even owned by the Mormon Church in Salt Lake. Gospel Topics Essays. These are a group of 12 essays published by the Mormon Church to answer 12 rather thorny questions. They include, are Mormons Christians? Becoming like a God? Let's see. I mean, so many DNA, DNA studies, I mean, I, I'm, I'm I'm trying to muffle my laughter here, but anyway, uh, is there a mother in heaven? Oh my goodness. Oh, I like the more, like a patriarchal Mormon system would even care, but we're going to answer that for you because of course Joseph Smith said there was, but oh, brand new, you know, kind of demeaned women, but let's see, peace and violence among the 19th century Latter-day Saints, yeah, we could go into the entire history of the Civil War with that one and who was on which side. I believe, and evidence will show, Joseph Smith was an anti-abolitionist, as were the original Mormons. That was their calling. Brigham Young and his band of brothers and bandits were pro-slavers, and they made it very clear they not only slaved people of color, but they slaved, enslaved their women also. Not a good sort of men. And they were the Danites. Uh, modeled after the KKK of our dear religious leader, Albert Pike <laughs> of the Masons, in which we still have a statue in Washington, a, a violent, mean-spirited man who just happened to do the KKK and the burnings and lynchings. And, oh my goodness, we can't even talk about the carnage. But let's move on. Let's see. And they talk about plural a woman's favorite topic since it's so simple to her self-esteem, to her sense of purpose, to her sense of meaning. But of course, most men uh, don't have that sensitivity chip to know what is meaningful for women because they're basically, they lick each other's boots and lick each other's asses and say, hey, yeah, bro, you're the great man of the world. I'm the king of the world, said Brigham Young, and everyone said, yaho. Anyway, I will, I discovered something that I knew if I just researched long enough, I would discover. It. So if they were lying to us then, what makes you think they'd be telling the truth now? Liars are always liars. And they are lying in these gospel topic essays. This is the Brigham Might. Utah Church. They have lied for over a hundred years. 
it boggles my mind why anybody would say that Joseph never attacked the women. But, you know, talk about what, what are some of the justifications for that, and then why are those justifications incorrect? You know, it, it's interesting, uh, Rick, that you would bring that up now, because by the time this, this interview is aired, uh, the interpreter will have published a very long article that I've written hmm. where I don't just give evidence that Joseph did it, but I actually attack the arguments by, I mentioned Rock Waterman, I mentioned the prices, and then Denver Snuffer, who um, is, in my view, just the latest false prophet. And, and remember, I started looking at Mormon fundamentalism, and, and I documented and wrote articles on men who came as, as great leaders or, or great for this reason or that reason, and then they just fall by the wayside. And there's a number of these that I talk about in my book. Um, and I think Denver is just the latest in all of these, this type of a pattern. But for those who have questions, the easiest way probably to detect Denver um, is to, uh, he said Joseph didn't practice polygamy, and then just look at the evidence. And I outline it all here. Uh, it is true that most of the evidence that Joseph practiced plural marriage is from late sources, but not all of it. Uh, the novel expositor states right in there that Joseph Smith had a revelation. It was read to the, uh, the high council. We've got testimonials from William Law and Jane Law saying that Joseph was teaching polygamy. These are contemporaneous. Uh, there are entries in William Clayton's journal. Uh, John C. Bennett clearly had heard some rumors. I don't think he was ever in confidence of Joseph with it. But to say that it's all old is not true. There are some very important contemporaneous sources. And then you've got a whole truckload of, of late sources from dozens and dozens of people who must have either been in a huge conspiracy or Joseph was practicing it and actively teaching it. I also, in that, I have a section on section 132. People say it was doctored up or, or something like that. It is true that the William Clayton version was destroyed. We don't know exactly how. There's contradictory evidences there. Did Emma burn it, or did she insist that Joseph burn it? I mean, there's the, the differences are not huge, but it clearly was destroyed. But there have been a copy made, and this is by Joseph C. Kingsbury. He did it. He, you know, he was a penman. He could write, and, and in that day, if you could write uh, with a, a good pen, uh, a good handwriting, uh, that sets you apart because not everybody was that literate in that in the uh, Nauvoo era. And so uh, he wrote this down at, at the Bishop Whitney's request. And he kept that. Um, this is Helen's father. He kept it in a, in his in a notebook until 1847, when uh, he was asked to give this to Brigham. And we have an account from Horace Whitney, who uh, wrote it down, copied it, and and that copy they still have, I guess. I don't know, but the copy that that Joseph C. Kingsbury uh, wrote is uh, wrote down is available online you can find it on the joseph smith papers project i've reposted it too but if you look at it it's clearly in kingsbury's hand it's not been doctored up there's there's no evidence that anybody was editing it or, or making changes in it or anything like the accusations are saying and we've got testimonies from clayton and kingsbury that this is the actual document that joseph dictated that day so so it dates back to 1843 the provenance is very good the idea that brigham had it written up or something is not supported by any kind of evidence when you swore to love and to honor and to cherish your husband, that too was a lie? Yes. And when the police questioned you about this wretched man who believed himself married and loved, you told them? I told them what Leonard wanted me to say. You told them that he was at home with you at 25 minutes past nine, and now you say that that was a lie? Yes, a lie. And when you said that he had accidentally cut his wrist, again you lied? Yes. And now today you've told us a new story entirely. The question is, Frau Helm, were you lying then? Are you lying now? Or are you not, in fact, a chronic and habitual liar? Smoking gun. Evidence, particularly of a crime, that is difficult or impossible to dispute. S-M-O-K-I-N-G-G-U-N So I found this book called Blood Atonement and the Origin of Plural Marriage a discussion. And it's written by a Richard Evans. And what this includes, it's between Joseph Fielding Smith's son and a Mr. Richard Evans, who appears to have been a Mormon from Canada that visited Joseph Fielding Smith Jr. and interviewed him and then reported the interview verbatim. Mr. Evans claims, not so much, says Joseph Fielding Smith Jr. But notwithstanding, this takes place during the time of the Smootarians, and it's concerning whether or not the Utah Mormon Church is practicing polygamy, and who is responsible for it. Is it Joseph Smith, which Mr. Evans says it was not because 
he was converted to a Mormon church that did not practice polygamy, but that Joseph Fielding Smith, and by the way, Joseph Fielding Smith has not, is not related to the Joseph Smith family. Joseph Fielding came from Canada, from England, and was part of the Parley Pratt, part of the um, Sydney Rigdon crew that was trying to overthrow not only Mormonism, but also the United States as funded by uh, the British oligarchs and the Alexander Campbells of the world, using religion as a pretext for simple treason is what it's all about. And these are British assets sent over under the cover of religious preachers to basically sow discontent and actually lead terrorist actions. You will find in Lucy Max Smith's biography that all the mobs, quote unquote mobs that she refers to, were led by Methodist preachers or Baptist preachers. So what are these preachers doing being heads of militia? Well, they were the generals, so to speak. These religious leaders were not simple, peaceful folk. They were the leaders of the military and they were sent by British oligarchs to destroy the United States as started with the Revolutionary War, War of 1812, the Civil War. It never ended, brother against brother. Nobody could figure out who was a loyalist to the United States and who was a loyalist to the British banking oligarchs. Let me tell you, King George III in the Revolutionary War, they put him in the loony bin and his wife couldn't visit him. And basically, same old story. Uh, it's not George III. It was the British banking oligarchs that instigated the Revolutionary War. Washington was the British asset. And most historians now believe that the four wars of the colonies or the intercolonial war that started with, ended with the French Indian War, but started with all the different monarchs. And then you've got the Revolutionary War, you've got the War of 1812, you've got the so it was a long war only interrupted by moments of temporary quasi peace because as we see in the Mormon culture, these British assets were terrorists. They were marauding uh, peaceful settlements. They were marauding Missouri, they were marauding Illinois, and they were completely infiltrating these Western territories, which was easy. Governor Boggs was a relative of Boone, Governor Boggs' brother, William Boggs in Illinois, hired John D. Lee. John D. Lee worked for Governor Boggs' brother in Illinois. And they said, I mean, they chased the Mormons and the Utah Mormons from Illinois, Kirtland, Kirtland, Ohio, from Kirtland down to Missouri. And who should come down? Well, John D. Lee comes down at the behest of the Boggs and Company to create false flag terrorism. And if you read John D. Lee's autobiography, it is one of which he is a very simple orphan. He's an orphan. And these are the people that the British oligarchs target and bring into the fold and create this cocoon of love, and they can turn the most innocent of boys who have been abused and abandoned into loyal, what should I say, killers, because these boys have no other method of understanding love other than loyalty to a patron. And uh, John D. Lee had a patron, and he was William Boggs in Ohio on the Mississippi River and sent down to be part of the Danite Boggs Company. Polygamy. Speaking of plural marriage, you say, I shall not discuss its virtues. Surely that is kind. Let civilization give ear, Mr. Smith calls that a virtue which wrecks the happiness of every woman who is enslaved by it. That doctrine which permits Brigham Knights to live in what they call marriage with three sisters at one time, with mother and daughter at the same time. Your father, Joseph F. Smith, married and is now living with two sisters as wives. I refer to Julia Lam 
Sonan and Edna Lampson, bearing children to him, as you call that system a virtue. I have no evidence that those men you refer to as having practiced polygamy before young were guilty, as stated by you. But the following evidence shows clearly that Brigham Young was under suspicion before Joseph's death, and he has since admitted that he had a revelation on polygamy before the church knew anything of the doctrine. In a speech by Brigham Young on June 21, 1874, see Desert News of July 1, 1874, reread the following statement relative to the origin of the doctrine of polygamy. While we were in England, this is Brigham Young speaking, while we were in England in 1839 and 1840, I think the Lord manifested to me by vision and his spirit things that I did not then understand. I never opened my mouth to anyone concerning them until I returned to Nauvoo. Joseph had never mentioned this. There has never been any word of it in the church that I ever knew anything about at that time. But I had this for myself and kept it for myself. The Messenger, Volume 1, page 29, in which that self-admission, admission against interest in a reliable source, the Desert News, states that Brigham Young was the originator of the doctrine of polygamy and Joseph Smith knew nothing of it and that Brigham Young had a vision while he was in England and that's when he discovered that the Lord wanted him to practice polygamy but he never mentioned to Smith. So let's go on. Well, no one need blame Joseph anymore. Brigham is a self-confessed channel through which polygamy was given to his people. I hereby submit the testimony of Brigham Young's legal wife who left him after he was untrue to her. Testimony of Major Tom, Tom Wanless given to R.C. Evans, his nephews, in the presence of Mrs. Wanless and Mrs. Evans and her daughter in St. Louis, Missouri, September 7, 1904. Brigham Young's legal first wife states, and giving testimony, I met Brigham Young first and legal wife and her daughter in the winter of 1860-1861 at Central City, Colorado. She told me that Joseph Smith had nothing to do with polygamy, that he did not teach, practice, or in any way endorse the doctrine of polygamy, that he had nothing to do with the so-called revelation on celestial marriage, that that he had only but one wife. My husband, Brigham Young, Orson Pratt, she gave the name of another man whose name I have forgotten, made up the revelation on celestial marriage. My husband, Brigham Young, Orson Pratt, she gave the name of another man whose name I have forgotten, made up the revelation on celestial marriage. Before they left Illinois, some of them practiced them practice polygamy. Brigham Young went to Utah to reorganize the church and publicly introduce polygamy or to recognize the church as a polygamous on a polygamous basis. She left Brigham Young, this is Brigham Young legal wife whom she is referring, she left Brigham Young, finally obtained a divorce from him and was then living with her daughter. Brigham sent the daughter money according to an agreement she told me that they ought to have shot Brigham Young in place of Joseph Smith. I guess you might be inferring that Brigham Young may have had something to do with Joseph Smith's death, which I happen to believe based on some credible evidence, but let's go on. This statement of Major Wanless that she was Brigham Young's first wife is a mistake. Brigham married Miriam Works. October 8, 1824. She died September 8, 1832. In February 1834, he married Mary Ann Angel. She was his legal wife and perhaps is the one referred to by the Major. It is quite pardonable in Major Wanless in getting Brigham's wives mixed up. We opine poor Brigham was his at his wit's end to keep to keep the family records correct himself. And that's what we're finding now as all these documents are released in which 
There's much difficulty when you're faking documents to keep them all straight, all the fakes. Anyway, Chambers Encyclopedia, Volume 8. Chambers Encyclopedia, Volume 8. Students' Edition confirms that young statement in part it says, speaking of the practice of polygamy, Young, Pratt, and Hyde are its true originators. Emma, wife, Emma, wife and widow of the prophet, stoutly denied that her husband had any wife but herself. Young's revelation she declared to be a frog. From a host of other witnesses who will testify that Brigham Young was the man that introduced polygamy in the church, submit the statement of another broken-hearted woman from the ranks of Brigham Young's church. Fanny Stenhouse says polygamy was unheard of among the English saints in 1849. Pages 45, 47, 48. Tell it all by Fanny Stenhouse. In June of 1850, I heard the first whisper of polygamy. In January 1853, I first saw the revelation on polygamy. It was published in the Millennial Star in 18, that's 1853. Out of 30,000 saints in England in 1853, 1,776 have been excommunicated for apostasy through polygamy. The president of the conference was cut off. That's on page 160. When speaking regarding polygamy, she says, they know the only source of their revelations is the man Brigham Young. Brigham has outraged decency, driven slander, their most sacred ties by his shameless introduction of polygamy. That's on page 273. There have been many apostates from the teachings of Joseph Smith in the early days, but all apostates, Brother Brigham is the chief. That's on page 614. It is reported by family, Fanny Stenhouse and many others that Joseph Smith said, if ever the church had the misfortune to be led by Brother Brigham, it would he would lead it into hell. Why did Joseph Smith, a short time prior to his death, make the above and similar statements regarding the man Brigham Young? The reason is plain. He too had a doubtless he too had doubtless heard of the rumors as to his conduct and secret teachings, and the evidence would seem to indicate that just before his death, he made a move to bring the guilty to judgment. We will let William Marks, who is the president of Nauvoo, take at the time of Joseph Smith's death, testify. A few days before the occurrence, I met with Brother Joseph. He said that he wanted to cook converse with me regarding the affairs of the church, that we retired by ourselves. I will be given his word verbatim. They are indelibly stamped upon my mind. He said he had desired for a long time to have a talk with me on the subject of polygamy. He said it would eventually prove the overthrow of the church and we should soon oblige to leave the United States unless it should be speedily put down. He was satisfied that it was a cursed doctrine and that there must be every exertion made to put it down. He said that he should go before the congregation and proclaim against it, and I must go to the high council, and he would prefer charges against those in transgression, and I must serve them from the church, uh, sever them from the church, unless they made ample satisfaction. There was much more said, but this was the substance. The mob commenced to gather about Carthage in a few days after there was nothing done concerning it. That's the Saints Herald, Volume 1, pages 22, 23. And just for clarification's sake, Marx is not stating that Smith practiced it. He just had heard the rumors of this polygamy, polygamous practice and that he counseled Brother Marx that it must be brought down and severed from the church immediately, and those in transgression should be either disfellowshipped or brought back into the church once they repented. That's the substance. President Marx, after Joseph Smith made mention of the above converse conversation, it was soon rumored 
that he was about to apostatize and that his statements was the tissue of lies. See Saints Herald, Volume 1. Speaking of the revelation on polygamy, Mark said, never heard of it during Joseph's life. <laughs> it was evidently got up by Brigham Young and some of the twelve after Joseph's death. And that's Briggs' autobiography, uh, published in the Herald in 1901. Now I propose to produce, this is the author reading, Mormon from Canada. Now I propose, uh, non-polygamous, and I propose to produce evidence showing that I, that the Joseph Smith and the church during his lifetime condemned polygamy in the strongest terms. First I submit the testimony of 31 witnesses. See, we had equal witnesses to the ones that are be promoted by the polygamous wives of Brigham Young. This particular brother of Mormonism in Canada had 31 witnesses stating that Joseph Smith never practiced polygamy. As published in the church on October 1st, 1842, we deem this sufficient to show you where Joseph and Hiram stood on the question. We, the undersigned members of the Church of Jesus Christ of Latter-day Saints and residents of the city of Nauvoo, persons or family, do hereby certify and declare that we know of no other rule or system of marriage than the one published from the Book of Covenants, and we give this certificate to show that Dr. John C. Bennett's secret wife system, a creature of his own make, as we know of no such society that practiced this, nor never did. This is signed by a, a number of the leading men of the church, some of the twelve apostles, some of the first presidency of the Utah church, and a number of the leading men of the church. A similar document was signed by Emma Smith's wife of Joseph Smith and a number of leading women in the church, 31 witnesses in all. And I would like to put them side by side with the ones that are now falling apart from the Brigham Young, Utah Mormons. Now I submit for your consideration a statement made by Joseph Smith and his brother Hiram just a few months prior to the assassination. They learned that a man up there in the state of Michigan, which is teaching polygamy, and this is what they said about it. As we have lately been credibly informed that a member of the Church of Jesus Christ of Latter-day Saints, a man of the name of Hiram Brown, has been teaching polygamy and other false and corrupt documents in the county of Lapeer, state of Michigan, this is to notify him and the church in general that he has been that he has been cut off from the church for his iniquity, signed Joseph Smith, Hiram Smith, president of the church. So Hiram Smith was the president of that church, of the church in 1844. This was given in February 1844. Joseph was killed four months after that. Here he declares that polygamy is a crime and the man was excommunicated from the church for preaching it, which... There is no chain of custody. Uh, it's inadmissible evidence. That revelation is completely inadmissible as unreliable because it pops up seven years after Smith's death, and there's really no one who can reliably state that that was done as a business record in the normal course of a meeting. It wasn't. The church's version, the Utah church's version, is that Smith just wrote it down one evening and gave, because Hiram wanted, and they copied it, and so it wasn't even done in uh, orderly church business. So there's no, no uh, um, exception to the hearsay rule, rule for the actual revelation of itself. But these statements are admissible against Brigham Young. It, these can be used against Brigham Young if he and the church declares that Joseph Smith is the origin, originator. This can be brought a, into court as the admission against interests of the Utah Mormon Church, and they are, and these are reliable sources. When you've got the Desert News. Uh, published, which is a reliable source, um, and then affidavit supporting it. And then I'm also going to show you other instances of corroborating evidence. One of the most important are the Relief Society 
meeting records in which in April of 1842, Smith preaches to the Relief Society that he has four enemies. He names their names. They're Parley Pratt, Hiram Pratt, Orson Hyde, and um, William Page. And then he mentions unstated fifth enemy, which turns out to be John C. Bennett, because at that meeting, Joseph Smith hands the keys to his church. He is hating it. His church to the Relief Society and Emma Smith. And he tells the Relief Society, Joseph Smith states the Relief Society needs to be earnest in searching out and finding corruption and resolving it. And in May of 1842, three weeks after that Relief Society meeting in which Joseph Smith hands the keys to his church and his priesthood to the Relief Society, the Relief Society holds court and John C. Bennett is excommunicated. The other cooperating document is the last Relief Society minutes in which that particular document that was signed by Joseph and Hiram was presented to the Relief Society and Emma Smith in that last meeting of the Relief Society states that there has been a scandal going around involving Hiram Smith not Joseph Smith, but Hiram Smith. And I will point you later on to documents that show that Mr. Jackson, the Laws, the Higbees, the Fosters were in a conspiracy to assassinate the entire Hiram Smith family. And this was of deep concern to the Smith family. They knew they were in danger. It, this Nava period is complete chaos. It is complete chaos, and it's my contention, and I plan to provide additional evidence to show that Joseph Smith was kidnapped and held prisoner in Nauvoo, and he was done that solely because these Confederates, Brigham Young, Parley Pratt, uh, Orson Hyde, William Page, the Laws, um, John Taylor, they had to gather up additional converts and additional money in England and bring them over so they could make the trek to the Utah Territory and provide the Western Front to as a colony of Great Brit Britain and attack the United States during the Civil War from the West. Canada was to attack the United States from the North and Mexico through... Um, going to attack the South from Mexico. And the plan was to break up the United States into four or five different balkanized regions, each to have a sphere of influence, such as Brigham Young would have the Western influence, and Canada would have the Northern part, the New Hampshire, Vermont area, New England area, and Mexico, through uh, the French influence, would be ruling the colony to the south of Louisiana.